Well, a concerning new report by the United Nations finds in Afghanistan, the Taliban are placing severe restrictions on women, in particular on single and what they call unaccompanied women. According to the UN's most recent quarterly report, the Taliban is placing restrictions for work, health care and travel on women who are not married. A few years ago, the Taliban prevented girls from attending school beyond sixth grade. It also started enforcing a dress code, which included wearing a head-to-toe burqa. The Taliban retook control of Afghanistan following the U.S. withdrawal in 2021. And one person who knows firsthand about the situation in Afghanistan is Jason Jones, human rights advocate and founder and president of the Vulnerable People Project. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, first, I want to get yes, your you thoughts on this latest report from the UN. Yeah, well, it's really just the tip of the iceberg, you know, uh, after the catastrophe of the Biden administration's ham-fisted withdrawal from Afghanistan. It's been one disaster after another, natural disasters like earthquakes and human disasters like uh, famine caused by five decades of war, um, political unrest. There have been clashes between Iran and the Taliban, ISIS attacks on religious minorities like the Hazara. So this report really just uh, scratches the surface of the deep sorrows that the people of Afghanistan are suffering. Yeah, and you've done a lot of work in Afghanistan, helping the people there with your Help for Afghanistan program, which included opening a women's health clinic. Tell us what you have seen and heard from women in Afghanistan. Well, you know, just this week, we uh, evacuated an Afghan woman who was beaten almost to death. We moved her to um, Pakistan, where now we're processing her paperwork to get her uh, humanitarian parole. Um, last year, just several months ago, we had to evacuate several girls whose who, who their school was bombed in an ISIS attack to Spain for medical treatment. Um, a couple of months ago, we had to rescue some young Afghan girls in Pakistan who were being trafficked and brought them into our safe houses. And through our Coal for Christmas campaign, of course, we're distributing food and coal to minorities, religious and ethnic minorities, and the uh, widows and orphans of our allies who were killed in action. So as we work in every province in Afghanistan and in the neighboring countries to care for our allies who are seeking to eventually be brought to the United States because they have been promised visas and they've been waiting now three years, um, we see that the women and the children of Afghanistan are, 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 are suffering horribly. They are indeed. And when the Taliban came back into power um, after the U.S. left, they claimed that they will be more moderate than they were before. Uh, that certainly has not been the case. In fact, life for women, as you know, there has really progressively gotten worse from a human rights standpoint. Jason, what do you think can be done, if anything, to change this? Well, I think the U.S. government has to do, keep its promise to our allies who are given visas. Uh, there are tens of thousands of Afghan allies uh, in hiding, still waiting for the U.S. State Department to process their visa requests. It's the first thing we can do. That's something we can unilaterally do uh, to help those who served us. Um, and I do believe we need to begin engaging with the government in Afghanistan, specifically to advocate for an end to the genocide of the Hazara people, to demand a coalition government that allows all the communities in Afghanistan to participate in this government, and to see at least the most fundamental basic protections uh, for women. And after five decades of war wars that involved the two most empower the two most powerful militaries in the world, first the USSR and then the United States, I think we have to um, really work to guarantee food security so the people of Afghanistan that are living on the brink of starvation uh, can have hope. There's a new movie coming out March 8th on the life of Mother Cabrini. And she had said to the Holy Father that her goal was to create an empire of hope. And her ultimate ambition was to bring hope to the people of Afghanistan. She said, the people of the world have forgotten Afghanistan. So I remember, that's what this wonderful Catholic saint said over a century ago. And here we are again, I feel that the world has forgotten Afghanistan. And I'm privileged to run a Catholic apostolate that seeks to bring hope to the people of Afghanistan in the same way that St. Cabrini desired to bring hope to the people of Afghanistan. That's so beautiful, Jason. And your program over there is called Hope for Afghanistan. Quickly, almost out of time, but what's your hope for Afghanistan? Uh, my hope is that, in my prayer every night with my family, we, we pray every night that Afghanistan 
uh, can in our lifetime become a shining example of peace, prosperity, and religious freedom where the ethnic minorities participate and thrive. This is this is my prayer. For two decades, um, the men and women, our men and women in uniform, uh, fought shoulder to shoulder with the people of Afghanistan. We've knit together a very tight bond. Um, we have created a few, we have created we have participated in creating this catastrophe in Afghanistan in the wake of uh, the Biden withdrawal. So we need to participate uh, and cooperate to creating uh, a prosperous and pe peaceful future for the families of Afghanistan. Oh, Jason, thank you so much for coming on, for all that you do. We appreciate it. God bless you, friend. Thank you, Tracy.